And speaking of fresh project, I I still have to show you guys how to do the correct color correction. Um, so this might be a good segue into that. And that's what this that's what this image is for. Um, so let me put that on the other monitor and let me turn that off. So I want to, we're just going to close this. I'm going to do this in a completely new project file. So, um, let's just open Unreal. Uh, 5.4. I haven't, I haven't tried that yet. The new engine. I've still been using 5.3. I've downloaded 5.4, but I haven't actually done anything in it yet. Um, so yeah, let's just make a new, let's make a new project file to show this off. I appreciate that. I think everybody here is, is very talented. Uh, I'm very happy with everybody's contributions. Um, all right, so we're just gonna make a new new one here. So the problem, here's the problem. <clears throat> when you put sprites into Unreal, they look like garbage. <laughs> the colors are all wrong. Um, like the lighting system is, is going wild on them and you have to turn that stuff off manually. And it was something that I researched and I could not find a proper answer to. Um, so I had to basically just kind of figure it out and um, thankfully having complained about it has also gotten people thinking about it too. So um, I guess it, sometimes it's good to complain, right? Uh, let's see, a new, not recent, let's just say a new game, right? A new blank project. Because um, we don't want, we don't want anything else right now. We're just doing a lighting example. So I'll just select blueprint for now. And, and this is all fine. And I'm just gonna do sprite color test. So I'll show you what I figured out. So that from now on, there are no excuses. Any Unreal project in 2D better have the proper colors for your sprites. You, you, you are all on watch now. I'm giving you the answer for free. Okay. So the first thing we're going to do is to fly to the center of the world here. Can we? Oh my god, it's going to take forever. Yeah, we. Okay, we're going to fly to the center of the world, and we're just going to... Well, we're going to slow down now. And we're going to put some sprites in the world, and we'll see, you know... We'll see how garbo it looks when you do it without correcting anything. So, go to content drawer. I'm going to pull up my desktop. And I'm going to drag in that, oh, I don't want to drag it here, not here. We want to put it here, just for example's sake. So here's our texture. We've imported it. It's just, it's just this image. Got a couple sprites on it. And we will see that the sprites will look like garbage when we put them into the scene. Um, first, we're going to apply the Paper 2D texture settings. Uh, if you don't have Paper 2D, there you might have to download the plugin and install it. Um, it's basically Unreal's two-dimensional sprite support, I guess. And then um, now we right-click it and we create a sprite out of it. And there's our sprite. So, <clears throat> excuse me. I think we can just add a sprite here. Usually I'll make, you know, I'll just make a blueprint for it. That's kind of the proper way you should do this. I'll make an actor and just just call it BP Sprite Test. Um, and then I have two monitors, so I gotta drag stuff in and out so you guys can see this here. We're just gonna add a simple um, sprite with paper, paper sprite with paper 2D. And then we're just gonna select a sprite here. And there, there's our stuff. Um, it looks probably mostly correct, but if you take a closer look, the contrast on Mega Man here is not quite right. Um, the colors are distorted. So if we look at them side by side, 
you know, you'll notice that there's some wonky stuff going on here. That they don't... Oh, where'd it go? Here it is. There's some wonky stuff here. The contrast is higher. The blues don't quite look right. They're, they're different. Uh, the face looks brighter for some reason. And here, like, you can really tell if you take, like, a snapshot here and then, like, paste it in. You can really tell that it's not the same. You can even... Like, if you take this, and you this is the same color here. We pulled this color here. You can tell this is not the same. So Unreal is doing some weird, god-awful things to your sprite work. It's changing the colors, and we can't have that. That's not good. Uh, so, here's how you fix all that. Uh, so one, let's... Let's just bump this up here. And I also want to get this icon to go away because it's annoying. So there you can just get a new scene and you can just replace the scene root, the default scene root with that new scene and then that icon goes away. So I always do that because I find it very annoying. Uh, we're going to save and compile that. We'll keep this up on the tab just so we can fiddle with it if we need to. And here we'll just take this BP sprite test and then, oh my god, look at that. Look, he's all blown out. The light's hitting them. I'm trying to get close here. I'm trying to slow the camera down so I can get close. Look at this. It's all blown out. The lighting system's killing all the pixels. Look what they did to my boy. It's awful. Yeah, we don't want that. Uh, I don't know. Let's see. Let's get him slightly. I don't want him like in the ground, but I want to look. I want him to look like they're standing there. Yeah. Yeah, that's bad, man. That's that's Garbo, right? You do not want that. So, okay. First things first. You want to make sure you pay attention to what sprite material you have. You want the unlit one, first of all. Um, there might be a lit one in here somewhere. Uh, yeah, there's a lit sprite material. And that even takes even more color information from like the lighting and stuff. But you don't want that. If you want to preserve the colors, you want to make sure, first of all, that it's unlit. Uh, so there's no lighting hitting it. Now, Unreal is processing the light coming from here anyway, even though you told it not to with the unlit. But there's more things we need to do. So we'll, we'll get there. We'll get there. It's a process. Um, so the next thing we need to do, we basically correct it through post-processing. You can set post-processing options for your camera in Unreal. So we want to... <sighs> volumes. I think it's volumes. I'm doing this off the cuff, so sorry if I'm looking around here for a minute. Um, I'm pretty sure it's a post-processing volume. Yeah. So now look, we've got all these little... We've got all these options here that we can fiddle around with, and that's how we're going to correct this. So, first thing though, we want to tell it that... Because see this little box here? You see this little outline of a box? That's the only place that this is going to take effect, is when we're like inside the box. Like with the cameras inside the box, and those settings take effect. But we want to tell it to span the entire level. And there is... Here, infinite extent, under post-processing volume settings, infinite extent, unbound, whether this volume covers the whole world or just the area inside the bounds, and that, what they mean by bounds is this wireframe rectangle, box, cube, whatever you want to call it. So we're going to click that and boom, okay. Now the whole world is affected by all this stuff. And then, um, you'll see, nothing has changed yet. Um, oh, actually, wait, hold on. Where is the player starting? Where's the player start? We gotta get that close to to our um, to our sprites here. So we gotta move this in the distance. Oh, he went way too far, did he? Did he go too far? He went way too far. Let's get an overview here. We want to get him by the sprites. So here, move him over here. Move him over here. There. Uh, let's see. Are we there now? We gotta turn around, but we're here. There they are, but yeah, look, they're Garbo. 
they're they're still they're still wacky. So now we're gonna fix that using this post processing volume. But we need to see it in game. I don't think it actually reflects. I don't think the settings actually reflect in the in the editor viewport. I think you can only see it when you're actually active in the game. Maybe there's a way to to apply it, but I'm not really sure. So let me pop up my notes here. I don't want to give you bad info. Okay, the first thing we need to do is to correct the exposure. So under exposure here, you've got all of these options, but honestly, you only need these two. This this minimum EV100 and maximum EV100, you just set that shit to zero. You don't want it. Oh yeah, it did actually affect the, the world, it looked like. So that's good. Yeah. You see, if I uncheck it, it's a little, it's a little different. It gets like a little darker. That kind of keeps the exposure from moving. Um, and that what? Yeah, it looks like GBA sprites. Yeah, because they're all like blown out and like faded. Yeah, <laughs> that's true. Um, but this keeps it from the exposure from setting because or, or from uh, adjusting. Because in like a 3D game, like in a real 3D game, you would if you're in a dark area, it it kind of brightens up the dark area and then if you step out into the light you know it looks all bright but then it starts to like almost like your eyes are getting used to it that kind of effect you know that's that's what this is for that's what what there's this automatic exposure thing is for but we don't want that to change it's a 2d game we want to control the brightness of things using the textures and using the sprites we don't want to to automatically do that i mean unless you want to make a pixel game that does that. I mean, you could do that if you want to, but let's just say you want a retro game and you don't want that to happen, so. Uh, so let's see. The next thing is the vignette, and I can't remember what... not sure what category it's under. We'll explore here for a second. Image effects? Okay, so here's one of the tricky things. You see right there that vignette is turned off. But it's not. Just because the option is disabled does not mean that the effect is disabled. That was one of the big things I had to learn about this. So we actually have to turn vignette on and explicitly set it to zero. And look at that. Look how much brighter everything got. Default. Vignette off. Vignette at zero. Default vignette. Vignette at zero. Look at that. So we're getting there. We're getting there. I'm actually glad that it shows it uh, in the viewport like this, because um, then we don't we, then we don't have to play it. I mean, you could, you know, play it to verify that it's doing what you, you want it to do, but it's nice to have the preview. Because you can set these, you don't have to use this post-processing volume, you can set these on the camera itself, and I think that's probably what I did. Uh, and that's probably why I had to keep hitting play in, in the prototype in order to see the effect of it, but... Either way, we found a better way. Um, so then blue correction. This is the one I see no one talking about. Blue correction. You have to set the blue correction. Um, it's probably under color grading. I'm not sure which one exactly. But we'll find it. Miscellaneous. Blue correction. Set that to zero. That will screw up Mega Man's color. You can get all the other settings right and it will look sort of okay, but the blue will still be wrong on Mega Man. You want blue correction to be zero. Turn that off. Now the next one, I've heard people say, turn off expand gamut, but I have not noticed a difference. So if we set this to zero, I don't think I see a difference when I turn it on and off. Oh, you know what? Luigi. Look at Luigi's colors. Well, which one's better now? Luigi's green actually changes. Hmm. I don't see blue on Mega Man changing, but I definitely see the green on Luigi changing. I was initially worried that maybe setting this might interrupt HDR. Um, so I don't know. This one you might want to think about on a per cases basis um but let's see what does luigi's green look like here 
That's what expand gamut off. I don't know. It looks closer with it when when we don't set it, or we just leave it default. It looks washed out when we have it. We'll we'll leave it on there for now, and then we'll come back and turn it off at the end. There's a lot more stuff to to do that has a lot more impact on on this stuff. So we'll 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 explore that together. I've currently had it off in the prototype, just FYI, because um, I, I was afraid based on the description. But like expanding, I'm sorry, I keep moving the mouse. About expanding the um, outside of the the normal gamut rendering, I I was worried that that might interfere with HDR. But we'll see. We'll see how this goes at, at the end. I don't have an HDR monitor, so I couldn't tell you. Um, I wish I did. So we'll do an experiment. We'll turn it off at the end and see if when we're done with all the other stuff. But we got we got more stuff to go here. Uh, tone curve, tone curve. Oh, this one's an awful one. Turn this to zero. Tone curve to zero. Boom! Whoa! Look at that improvement. Look at that. That's one of the big ones. This one was driving me nuts. Now let's see. Expand gamut off. On. Oh, it's not making like any difference now. Very, very light difference. I don't know. We'll still leave it on just to see what it looks like at the end. Yeah, Tone Curve, that was a huge one. That was one of the big ones that I had to find. Uh, it, it, Unreal automatically... Well, it does the Tone Curving, if, if you know what that means. Like, That's a good way to explain it. It screws your color up. <laughs> there you go. It screws your color up. Just turn it off. Well, it takes like the color that's in the texture, and it's like, okay, well, we're going to... We're kind of kind of reshape the color curves so that they're a little different. And Unreal has a default one that it does, and you can change the intensity of how much it actually does. You know this stuff, as you can see. Obviously, we want zero. We do not want our colors changed at all because that's the problem. Unreal is changing the color of the sprites, and we don't want that. We want to control what color the color of the sprites based on the actual the image files that we put in. We don't want unreal to to do it on its own so okay then the next one is global illumination now there's two ways you can go about this here the method here lumen you can turn it off you can turn it to none that's definitely what you want um you can see the color does change it does actually affect the sprite somehow i don't know why um, there's different ones you can use, but you don't really want to do that. You want to turn it off. Now you can turn it off for the whole project too, and I would recommend that you also do this. So if you go to Engine and Rendering, somewhere here, Rendering, then let's see. Did I go by? No. Somewhere in here. Here it is. Dynamic global illumination. Just turn it off. Because then it won't even bother loading these resources. I guarantee that if you have this checked and it's actually on Lumen or something else, it's probably going to make your build size bigger and it's probably going to be loading more stuff into RAM. Just, just turn it off. Keep it off completely. And we're going to put this to the side because we're going to come back to this in a minute. So, um, just to be safe, I turn it off on both. And then motion blur is terrible. We don't want motion blur in a 2D game. Uh, well, I don't know. I guess it's up to you, but I don't, I don't think you should have motion blur in a 2D game. So go down here to... No. Uh, yeah, I think the amount. Yeah, turn motion blur to zero. Again, this one also has a double setting. So... You know, we want to... I don't know if you can really see it. It might not come through very well anyway. I don't know, can we crank it? I don't know, I don't really see it, honestly, but... We want it to be zero, because you will see it, like, in-game when things are moving, when the screen is still and an object is moving. That's where you really see it. Like, I don't know if we can... Oh, that's snapping. Yeah, you probably won't see it like that. Uh, but if, like, if the screen is just still and Mega Man's running around the screen, you'll see it. And it's god-awful. It looks like trash. So you don't want that. Unless you're crazy. 
<laughs> I don't know. If you do like a high res hand drawn art, maybe there's some application for it, but definitely not for sprites. I would not recommend it. So we turn that off. But again, there is a second option for this in here somewhere. Because I remember I actually found it first in here and and later on the camera settings. Um no, it's somewhere in here. Oh yeah, bloom. We don't want bloom either. We'll turn bloom off and turn off motion blur here. Get rid of those. But now we're looking pretty okay here. Oh, I tried to save the level. It was an instinct. I'm always saving. Now we're looking a bit better. So let's see if we get in here. They still look illuminated a little bit, though. Might have to turn the light off in the, in the thing here. But let's do the same test again, right? Um, let's take the face. Something about it looks, looks... Yeah, it still looks a little saturated here. Maybe it's because that expand gamut's on? Or off? Let's see. Where are we? Oh, work my home. We might have to turn the light off and the on the level here too. But let's look first at where is it? Oh, we're already on, we're already selecting it. Let's go back to that post processing gamut thing. Now I'm kind of suspicious of that because I did not have that on in the prototype. Uh, where was it? Bloom? Do we have to turn this off? No. No. Yeah. It was already off. Okay. We don't have to do anything with that. Could we turned it off in the other thing? Where was... Where was that gamut thing? I think it was under... Color correction here. Where is it? Color grading? It's got to be on a... Oh, down here. Yeah, color grading. Miscellaneous. I'll be honest, it doesn't look like it makes any difference at this point. I, I'm i turning it on and off, and I, and I don't see any difference. I'm going to leave it off. I left it off in the prototype, so... But yeah, no, it still looks a little bright, so do we have to now? I just gotta double check everything. We are using the unlit sprite material. Let's make sure the material's all right. Was that, wait, did I get, no, that's not right. What did I highlight the hell out of this? Okay, this looks okay. It's, it's doing an emissive color. That's the unlit. It's unlit here. Surface and translucent. That's all okay. So let's take the lighting. Now they still look bright for some reason. Ah, hell. Now what's up? What's wrong now? Something's up. They shouldn't be this bright. They're definitely on the unlit. Hmm. The color is correct here. Let's double check the image itself. Neptune, yeah. Cause see, you can look at the, the image here and see that it looks all right. It's just when it's in the scene, I don't suppose it well, you know. When it's in the scene, it's brighter for some reason. I just want to make sure these, these are all set here. Um, cause you, you do, when you're working with the pixels, we found out that you do want to change some of these settings. 
like this this says unfiltered but apparently it's glitched so if you make like a release build it will actually start filtering again i'm not sure where that filter here we're gonna change this to nearest that'll fix release builds but you gotta do that per texture it's pain but you gotta do it uh, it's already got no mip maps i don't think that's gonna change anything here though now it still looks bright for some reason Hmm. Well, what the heck's going on now? That w that was all the settings in my notes. Um, wait, do we have to restart for global illumination to take effect? That actually might be that actually might be the the thing. We might have to restart for global illumination to come off. Uh, I'm gonna just call it test test yeah, blah, 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 test map. And we'll just save it right here, it's fine. I bet that's it, I bet that's it. Call me crazy, but I, I think that's I think that's what's going on. Um where okay, here we are. Please baby! Please baby! Fingers crossed, let's go! Uh, did I, what, did I get cut out there for a minute? Well, the recording is on my end, too, so I'll just upload it as is. Um, yes, open both of those, and let's go to... Oh no, where's my sprite? Where'd he go? Is he not there? Did it reset him or something? Um, is my sprite here? What happened? Did he not save? How come he didn't save? Oh wait, I have, or do I have to open... Do I have to open the map that I saved? Oh, there we go. There we go. Get open the map. No, it still looks bright, though. It still looks bright. So what happened? Do we just do we just kill all the lighting? Oh, <sighs> that just killed the group. It didn't actually take it out. Um. Okay. Well, I make the clouds are gone. Okay, everything is gone, but they are still bright, aren't they? All right, now I'm mad. Now I'm mad because this is, I this is these are all the steps that I took last time when I did this. Bloom. No, it's not the bloom. Let's let's retrace our steps now. Now I'm looking like a fraud. <laughs> this definitely does a lot of the heavy lifting. Um, exposure compensation? Oh, there it is. Sorry, I missed one. Exposure compensation has to be zero. There it was. I apologize. <laughs> Stream luck strikes again, yeah. No, I missed it. I missed it. It's in my notes, but I missed it because I'm dumb. I skipped a step. I went right to the EVs. Uh, there you go. And that, that should probably be pretty alright, so... Let's check, um, oh, and we might not see it in there. We'll just take a screenshot here. That was the final piece of the puzzle, my bad. I apologize in advance that this video is a mess. Um, yeah, so then we're gonna take it here. And we're gonna, we're gonna check it. Uh, honestly, for me, the easiest way to check this is just, um, uh, create a layer paste it in, and just take the color here, and then just start oh, to start going. And it's pretty close. It's pretty damn close. Now, I, I've not been able to get it 100%, and I'm not sure, because um, I think Unreal still does some color processing, but you can get it pretty damn close. But now that, now that we've gotten it this far, I want to I want to fiddle with that one setting, that gamut setting. Because I saw some people talking about that one. So maybe that has something to do with it. Color grading miscellaneous. Okay. And now we'll turn it to zero. Let's see if there's any noticeable effect here. I did not see one, but, you know, we'll see. Uh, So first, before before we 
check the sprites themselves. I want to just check between these two. Does it look like... Actually, I don't like that cut. I want to cut here so we've got a close... Oh, excuse me, sample on each of them. Do you see any difference between these two? And we can color pick and take a look. There's a slight difference. It's pretty imperceptible though to me. Well, all right. Let's let's see. Uh, let's just take X's face here and do the same test. Maybe maybe this does push it a little closer. If it does, cool. Then we'll use it. Yeah, it's still a little off. Still slightly. Actually, it's more off now than it was before. It feels like. Yeah, I don't know. I, I guess I can't fully recommend to have that expand gamut setting on. What if we make it one? Just, just for the heck of it, right? Just to see what happens? I don't know. <laughs> I'm pretty sure people recommended it be zero, but yeah, let's just see. Where is... here. <clears throat> Let's see what happens. Yeah, again, my, my only concern with this setting is that it might um, cause problems for HDR. Nah, it's, it's still wrong. I don't know. I guess I say, I say just keep it off. I think it's actually closer when it's off. But, um, yeah, so let's check the other characters now. Because I, I think, as far as I've witnessed, you can't get it 100% correct, but you can get it pretty damn close. So, let's sample the blues now. Yeah. Yeah, that's pretty close for the skin. The red. Man, that's, that's darker than I would like it to be. But it's still pretty close. A hell of a lot closer than it is before. Let's try the blues. The blues are really close. Yeah, blues are really close. Yeah. If you look back here, you almost can't even see the difference. Brush. Um... The black's darker than I expect, or lighter than I expected it to be, though. Hmm. Do you need the post-processing volume? Yeah. So the post-processing volume, you can do it on the camera if you want, but the post-processing volume is something that you can copy and paste without screwing with the camera settings, and it will apply to every camera everywhere. Um, so again, you don't strictly need it. You could do all of these on the camera, but I find it easier to manage a post-processing volume than it is to, to do it with the camera. So this overrides the camera settings, essentially. And then you can just copy and paste this or make like a blueprint out of it or something and then put it in all of your levels. I find that to be an easier way to manage it. So say if you have it, I'm pretty sure you can make this a... Uh, pretty sure you can make this a, a blueprint. Okay, if you make it a blueprint, then um, you could put it in all the levels, and if you need to change something later, then they'll all change. Because it'll all, all look back to the blueprint. I don't know if you can just like right click and... Save selected... Is that it? Save selected actor? I don't know. I, is there an easy way? Since you're here, AJ, is there an easy way to just be like, I want to turn this into a blueprint. Um, and save it. Like as an asset. Or does it not work that way? I know in Unity you can do something like that. I figured it would be like save, but I guess not. Place actor replace, you know. Yeah, there is. What do you, what do you do? How do you do that? I don't see any initial option there, but small button on the top right of the inspector. By inspector, you mean details? 
for this one? I guess not this one. Small button. Converts this actor- oh, into a reusable reprint. Yeah, there it is. Yay! Okay. Yeah, just actors, fine. Um, select. Yeah, there you go. That'd probably be the better way to do it. And then you can do all your settings here, and you just drop this into every map. And if you ever need to change anything, you change it once here, and it, it propagates everything else. There you go. I I learned something in my own learn video. Yeah, next to the lock, yeah. I didn't expect it to be this one, but yeah. Um... <clears throat> of course, now we got to do all the settings in here now and then look back the other way, but that's fine. It's still worth it. Uh, but yeah, they're, they're pretty close now. I'm not sure if you can really get closer than that. I feel like they're worse when you have the expand gamut on. So I, again, I don't think I can recommend that step that I've seen people mention. I'm, I'm just going to leave mine off for now. Because their, their recommendation was this at zero, but it doesn't seem to make any good difference to me. I'm going to assume that this won't change anything either. Or, not that one, this one. We can experiment a little bit. Those were all the settings that I found so far. I guess if we find more, we can always just make an updated video. We're here. Yeah, it looks the same. Wow. But yeah, I mean, that's pretty much it. That's, that's most of the stuff that I found. Maybe there's some other stuff. If there is, I'll make an update video. But that's all the stuff I did in the prototype, and it looked convincing to me. Or add it to your game mode so it always spawns. Yeah, yeah, you could do that. You could do that, yeah. Yeah, since you have the, it, since it's set to infinite, wherever. I, don't know, I guess we'll have to do it over here now. Um, since it's set to infinite expanse, it will cover the entire thing. Where is that one now? Uh, I showed it earlier. Do I have to do it on this one? Just go back in the video. <laughs> go back earlier in the video where I showed it. <laughs> I don't I don't know where the setting is. Expanse. No, it's not on there. It's probably on here now. Infinite? I have no idea where the setting went now. Well I'll do it before you convert it to an actor, I guess. I don't know. <laughs> Oh, there it is. Infinite extent. This this search for property is a godsend. I love this. That's one of the, I think Unity does not have this, or at least not the version that I was using. Uh, it's very helpful. Yeah, infinite extent. So that covers the whole world. And you don't have to worry about it. But I think AJ's ex uh, suggestion is good. If you just put it into your game mode or... Did you say game instance or game mode? Uh, game mode. I guess you could probably do it in game instance. No, because if you do it in game instance, I don't know if you keep it loaded all the time, or if it'll unload when you change levels. But either way, there, there's little there's little gimmicks you can you can do to help you out here, or just put it in every map. But I mean that's it. That's kind of the process. Um, Again, I don't think you can get it 100% correct, because Unreal still does a little bit of color processing. Because it is switching color spaces. Like, the... Here, you can say, oh yeah, it's... It's uh, sRGB. Wherever the... Where is the setting for that? Yeah, compression setting RGBA... There is a color setting somewhere here. Maybe I'm going by it. Power to advanced source color? Oh, here, 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 here. Default. You can set it explicitly to sRGB, but it doesn't change anything because it already is. But everything gets like converted to linear. 
so I, I suspect that the color, when the color space is being converted during rendering, I suspect that's where the little deviants come from. Because I guarantee if you select these, it's not going to make a difference. Because it's already an sRGB image, like they, the game already knows that. I will, just for just for neurotic sanity's sake, we'll double check it. But I have a feeling it's not going to make a damn difference. Nah, it looks the same to me. It's the same kind of distribution here. You still see a, a small variance, but that's as that's as close as I could get it. Um, so, you know, if anyone knows any more tricks or whatever, um, that's, that's what I've been able to find out. And then other people seem to be using similar settings now, so. Yeah, again, that, I, I've seen people talk about that expand gamut, but I don't, I don't think, I don't think that's gonna do anything. It doesn't seem to have any real impact. So, I'm, I'm gonna leave it off for now, again, and... That's it. So there you go. Correct your colors. I don't want to see blown out sprites anymore. You're all on watch. You better, you better do it. I go through. I go through the embarrassment of making this video on the fly without any practice, looking like I don't know anything. And now it's your turn. You better. You better do it. You correct your shit. Uh, and that's it. I guess that's the end of that segment. Um, that's, that's how you correct your colors. Oh, uh, the other thing too, actually, I guess I should mention when, when I was comparing the colors here, just really quickly, I was taking like a screenshot off the monitor and the monitor color settings could also be influencing what we see here. So when we paste it in to compare it to the sprite, it could actually also be causing some of the bit of difference, but I don't know how much it was and I'm honestly not sure how you would check it otherwise um yeah anyway let's um 